Hello, this is Anna Laura Brown, host of the Autoimmune Rehab Podcast, where we talk about how to actually thrive and heal your autoimmune condition rather than just covering it up with pills or changing your diet and hoping you'll feel better one day. We feature solo episodes on helpful topics and interviews with guests who have actually walked in your shoes with autoimmune disorders and or who have years of experience in helping people to thrive and not just survive with autoimmune challenges. I'm a health coach who started this podcast because I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in 2018 and wanted to inspire hope and transform health for people with autoimmune challenges. So keep listening. Let's get you the help and hope you really need. This is the Autoimmune Rehab Podcast. And today I am really excited to have my guest, Mara Eliza, with me. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. And she is going to be talking with us about a topic that is very much needed. We're going to be talking about the topic of adrenal fatigue and energy and a lack of energy, which... If you've been on your autoimmune journey for any length of time whatsoever, you're probably aware that that is a really big problem for pretty much everyone with any kind of an autoimmune condition. So welcome to the podcast, Maura, and why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I am a traditional naturopath, and that means that I work with people, teaching them about their bodies, giving them a new perspective, helping them understand. And I do things a little bit differently than many naturopaths. Some of them like to use a lot of supplements and diet changes and stuff like that. And and I think that those things can have their place, but I help to refocus people on what their symptoms might actually be telling them and reconnecting with their body and the wisdom, the guidance, the, the innate, um, guidance of your body and how we actually benefit whenever we uh, lean into that and listen to that rather than creating a war with that. And I love that. That's great. So it's kind of like the whole listening to yourself, focusing on, you know, maybe more like the root cause, the emotional aspect of, you know, why are you tired all the time? That kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And so I began helping mentally exhausted women who want to overcome overwhelm in order to wake up refreshed five mornings a week. That's almost, that's a lot of people. (laughs) And I have found that my methods work for women who maybe have a laundry list of diagnoses or women who just are looking for a few little tweaks to their lifestyle that they think might change, you know, their, their energy or freeze up some space on the calendar. And I get at it from a several pronged approach um, depending on the needs of the person. That's awesome. That's cool. So let's start off a little bit talking about your personal story. So I know that part of your backstory is that you personally had adrenal fatigue twice. So tell us a little bit about that. And what did you do to be able to recover without suffering for years on end with this annoying yeah. problem? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's more than annoying. It's it's so, it's terrible. So <laughs> adrenal fatigue is for those of you who might, your listeners who might not know, the adrenals are little glands that sit on top of the kidneys and they're responsible for kind of the stress response that we have and living in a fast paced world. And I say fast paced, whether you are a working mother or you're a working single person or you're a stay at home mother, everybody is just doing so much. Uh, we can talk about some of the things that have contributed to that later. Um, But for me, I was waking up with panic attacks and that was when I first got the diagnosis of adrenal fatigue because my adrenals had been kind of tapped out, just called upon, called upon, called upon, called upon without any chance to restore. So that first time I was already several years into natural health. I I wasn't a naturopath at the time, but I I had done all the digging. I had the best care providers, the best supplements, all of those things. And I just could not get better. The walking the dog more was not helping. The, all the different supplements, I couldn't even stick to supplement routines because I would just like lose my mind, like and just, just couldn't. I was so overwhelmed. And then also trying to like, you know, pinpoint the thing that I might have a hidden allergy to or food sensitivity to. Uh, it did not work. <laughs> I ended up completely burnt out. I actually lost everything that I had been trying to hold together at the time, the business, um, my, my sense of self. I, I think I, I feel like I almost just went to bed for a few years and that was the quote unquote recovery that I went through that time. So the next time, a few years later, when I woke up with the, 
a panic attack. I said, mm, I know what this is. And I remember what I did last time and it did not work. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, thankfully I was smart enough to not like repeat that cycle. <laughs> and I just said, well, what I had already been introduced to the idea that finally that our emotions can be at the root of things and that the body has this innate wisdom. I had started to let go of this kind of uh, Kelly Brogan calls it a warfare dynamic or, you know, that we have with our body and thinking that my body was attacking me and all of these things. And I said, well, what if I just listen to my body? Like, what's it going to tell me to do? And, and just trust that it will bring me out of adrenal fatigue if I just listen. So I gave myself permission to only take supplements when I remembered. And if I felt called to, and to do a whole bunch of other things, which I ended up putting into my, um, my signature method that I teach women in my online course and community. And it's, it's not, it's just so many small shifts and adjustments that you are making big changes without realizing it. Cause when you're overwhelmed, right? Like that's what people keep saying. Like, I don't have time to do a course. I don't have, I'm just already so full of information. So we needed to make it something that was little pieces. And that's really how I came to create the method myself was I found a little piece here, a little piece there, a little piece here, a little piece there. So I put it all in a course for- That's awesome. For I love that. That's great. And we'll have you share a little bit more about how that course works towards the end. So people can go check that out if they want. But yeah, yeah it's what people often don't realize is you're right, it's the little changes bit by bit, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so now let's address the whole topic about how, you know, sometimes people think that, you know, they're going to fix their fatigue, their adrenal fatigue with, you know, like you said, like lots of different supplements, lots of different workouts, dietary restrictions, things like that. From your experience, how do those kinds of things sometimes create more fatigue rather than less fatigue? Well, I mean, just think of all the time that you spend listening to podcasts after podcasts that might have the magic answer and going into rabbit holes and, and you're on your phone all the time, or you're on the computer researching, research, research, researching and making adrenal cocktails. <laughs> and, and like all the, I mean, when I went through it the first time, there was no such thing as a biohack. That wasn't a term yet, but now, now it is like, really, there's this culture around do more, do more, do more, do more, do more. And it's, starts to become impossible. It's actually the same energy that got you exhausted <laughs> in the first place. And while there's validity to some of those, um, those things, you know, I have a morning routine that I teach women, I go outside, I do go outside and I get that sunlight, but I don't get real nitpicky about, did I go out at exactly sunrise and like all of that mental thinking, like about doing it right in the perfectionism and and all of those things come together to just drive you crazy. It just like mentally exhausts you, of course. Oh, absolutely. It's like the whole concept of like, well, like you said, I mean, it's part of the reason we, especially as women, I mean, I believe that men can get it too, but it's typically a lot more women that end up with it. The reason we got it in the first place is because we got overwhelmed and didn't stop and practice self-care and things like that. So doing more of it's not really the solution. And I mean, like you said, I have found that, you know, having a morning routine, going outside or, I mean, I personally like to try and do at least 15 to 20 minutes of some kind of exercise with that swimming or walking or something in the morning, but not necessarily heavy aerobic exercise, you know, and I try to not overdo it. And if I just really don't feel like I can handle it, then I don't, but I feel like, you know, those things can contribute to my energy level. But if I were to go out and say, boy, I got to do a little, like a whole hour of Zumba or I got to do, you know, some big aggressive thing, that's not going to work for me and probably not for most people that have issues with their adrenals and thyroid and that kind of thing. Oh, for sure. I see women who like say I should go. I know that going to the gym, I know exercise is so good for my health. I should, 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 should. And they just should all over themselves when really you'll get so much more out of movement that you enjoy. You'll get so much more out of listening to your body. You'll get so much more out of having rest times and certain days where you're maybe take a break from that routine. Um, but so many women like should and push themselves and drive themselves expecting a payback when they're actually just depleting themselves and they need some rest and restoration time. 
Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So then let's talk about how are, you know, is the whole adrenal fatigue thing related to, you know, like your nervous system and how does, you know, maybe having your nervous system get a little bit out of balance, how does that impact your adrenal glands? Well, the nervous system is at the root of pretty much everything, you know, like it's, it's what guides and tells our body to do different things at different times. Um, and so the nervous system being in an activated state will control and tell those adrenals like, Hey, we need to release cortisol. We need to release adrenaline, whatever is appropriate for that time. So, I mean, everybody, it's pretty old, um, metaphor. Everybody's heard the chase by a tiger metaphor where we're living each day, like so driven and, and maybe not chased by a tiger, but like, okay, we're hunting, we're hunting, we're hunting. We're like constantly, just on the go and that is governed by our nervous system it's what we're telling our nervous system to do the nervous system though and the whole body needs to rest it needs to repair it needs to relax when it's in that heightened activated state it's not digesting it's not repairing it's not detoxing but if sometimes we get our nervous system so worked up that when we do give ourselves time to rest and time to um you know, just do nothing, which we know we need. Then when we lay down, we think, oh, I got to, I got to go do that. Oh, I got to, is the oven off? Oh, I got to, you know, and we're constantly hopping up and down because we're not just making, going through like the discomfort of getting our nervous system to adjust, adjusting to calming down. So, I mean, then, like I said at the beginning, the nervous system is just it's central to so many things. And the nervous system is actually governed by the, the mind, the thoughts we have, the stories that mm -hmm. we re, re repeat the, the, the little things that we are conscious and unconscious of. Um, and one of the things that I see a lot of women do that I think is one of the biggest mistakes is that they, they couple their worth with their productivity. Mm. Yeah. So this is what is like responsible for the constant driving, the never letting yourself relax, the constant like working, 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 working. And if women could just, if I could just get women to understand that just being born means you are deserving, means you are worthy, means that you are valuable. You were put here on this earth. I'm not going to get into like a spiritual or religious conversation, but, but just existing means that you are entitled and deserving of all of the pleasure and all of the rest. And those are actually really important. We usually put them kind of at the bottom of the list. Like, oh, I'll rest after I do the dishes and put the laundry away and, and all of those things that I, I want people to kind of flip it. Like, I have I earned my work time rather than earned my rest time? Yeah, that's good. I absolutely love that. So what would you say would be a tip or two to help somebody who's struggling with this, their nervous system is on overdrive, what kind of things can they do to actually get themselves to start calming down? Yeah, well, one of the things that we're struggling with right now that is newer is these computers that we have in our pocket. And, um, you know, I don't know if you remember sitting and watching TV with your family and somebody had the remote control and they're constantly channel surfing, and flicking, 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 and how, <laughs> how annoying <laughs> that can be because it's so much input, 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 input. Well, now it's like we have the that same thing going on with our phones in our pockets. And we just, when we get downtime, we have almost started to think that like pulling out our phone and it is relaxing, but it's not. It's actually really activating to our nervous system. It's like channel flipping all of the time. So I really encourage women to put some boundaries around their cell phones. And, and a really simple one can be when you're driving, if you get stopped at a stoplight, just keep your phone in your purse, keep it in the cup holder, keep it somewhere else and use that time to take a deep breath and just see if you can get your mind to relax a little bit. I call it mind melting or brain melting because um, it almost feels like that. You feel your temples relax, your, your skull, your face and, and don't work, don't get out the phone and, and to respond to a text or to look at what's going on on Instagram or, or whatever you do on your phone. Give yourself those little stolen moments like start to take those back yeah that's good absolutely i think that's true i uh personally went through a while back and actually just went on kind of an app deleting mode and took all my social apps and everything off my phone and was like you know what i'm only going to do it from the computer or from my ipad you know or something it just to 
stop, you know? Yeah, that's a great technique. I've even seen an app that was, would like shut down everything after a certain amount of time. You got 45 minutes or an hour on the phone or on your screen the whole day. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that's, that might be a good chance for an integration within our group or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, so for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's another idea too, for people that feel like they still need to use it some of the time, but yeah, make you stop after a certain point. Yeah. So sure. as we've been having this conversation, you know, about how, you know, a lot of women really struggle with this exhaustion, this adrenal fatigue, different things like that. What do you feel like are the three pillars that people are, you know, primarily women, but people in general need to get, a hold of in order to really figure out what's causing their exhaustion and then ultimately figure out the solution for overcoming it? Well, I usually take people down two different paths. They can work with me in two different ways. They can, if they, if they are wanting to start with like a lifestyle kind of, um, just let me make some, a few tweaks and see what happens. Um, then the three things that I would probably do in that area would be to check your mindset. Like I mentioned earlier with the coupling, your, your productivity with your worth. Like where are some other like little negative phrases that you say that keeps you driving yourself kind of relentlessly? Like where are ways that you're not being very nice to yourself or ways that you're, I had, I had a mentor who used to say, I won't shit on you if you don't shit on me. So like um, not shooting on yourself and like becoming aware of places where you're, you're doing that at your own expense. Mm -hmm. um then also finding stolen moments like i gave the tip for the cell phone in the car um finding little moments where you may be filling in time that you could be resting with something else and i'll, I'll give an example before i got before we got on this um recording i had a few minutes i was tempted to open instagram i still work with it every time like oh <laughs> and i was like you know what i will be so much more rested and prepared for the conversation and just in a better mindset if I don't fill myself up with a bunch of input and I just rested, I just breathed, I just, you know, practice a little gratitude and smiled to myself and um, finding moments where you can do things like that is, is huge. Um, and then learning to work actually with your body. So, um, for example, we have, we do have detox times when our body detoxifies and making sure if you're going to drink some dandelion root tea or something like that, do it when it's close to that detox time, that natural detox time. So you're not trying to force your body into doing something at its not optimal time. Um, for people who are a little bit more, you know, maybe they have a history of chronic Ill illness or they need to, they need to be reassured or they need to kind of zero in on what organs might be extra stressed. I do have a service where I can help them a little bit more one-on-one -on -one beyond just kind of the go at your own pace with the horse and community. Awesome. Cool. So I know another thing that we've been talking about, you know, is the importance of self-care. And part of that is having a self-care routine and creating one that you'll actually stick with. So share with us the resource that you have available for our listeners that can help them with that. Yes, I have a workshop called Why You Don't Need Complicated Self-Care Routines to Overcome Overwhelm. I'll be happy to share that link with you in that we go through the three biggest mistakes that I see women do, the three pillars, which I kind of outlined, but I go more in depth into those. And then I help you actually work through, well, first of all, reframe what you call as self-care. So um, I don't know if you want me to go over that a little bit now or save it. Sure. For yeah, go okay. ahead. Why don't you go ahead and share that? <laughs> So this is a definition I borrowed from Laura Doyle, who has a book called The Empowered Wire. She has a great series that I really love. But when I read her definition of self-care, I was like, aha, <laughs> because we tend to think of self-care as um, something that's good for us, quote unquote, good for us. And there's like a little should in there, like, oh, it's my self-care to go for a walk and my self-care to go to the gym. And if you love going to the gym, if you love going for a walk, by all means, do those things. But what she qualifies as self-care, it has all of three components. First off, it leaves you feeling good afterwards. So a lot of people kind of have, have that part under control, but it feels good while doing it. So if you really do not like going to the gym, that's not your self-care. <laughs> that doesn't count as one of your, of your self-care activities. Um, I actually love 
going to the gym with a friend, but I'm just going for my friend. <laughs> That's what gets me to the gym. <laughs> um, if I go by myself, then it doesn't count as self-care. And the third component is that nobody else can do it for you. So this takes any kind of chore off the table of self-care <laughs> because a partner or a child or a roommate or whatever can do the dishes or fold the laundry and you'll enjoy it just as much. So it doesn't count as self-care, but nobody can take a bath for you. No one can go dancing for you. No one can uh, read a book for you. Um, those are the things that are really self-care. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So why don't you tell us where people can access it? And then we'll, of course, have the link linked in the description since it will be easier for people to actually click on the link too. Yes. Uh, let's see. The link is overcome.thevibrantway.com. Awesome. Cool. Overcome.thevibrantway.com. Cool. So then tell us a little bit more about, so I know the Vibrant Way is like your course, I believe, or your community. Tell us a little bit more about that. And then of course, we'll link to that in the show notes, which I'm assuming is thevibrantway.com. Is that correct? It sure is. You got it. <laughs> and it's actually both. It's a course and a community. It started out as just a course, but it felt like we need something more. And then when I, I put the community together, I was like, oh, this is what it didn't feel complete. So the Vibrant Way is a course that I created based on my signature method. It's um, self-paced. You access it, um, you know, pay a monthly fee to be in the course and the community, and you self-pace yourself through the videos. Uh, each of the videos is 15 minutes or less because I wanted women to just be able to pop in real quick, pop in just for a little bit, and then have something that you can take, you can digest, you can work with it, you can kind of be thinking about it until you can come back again. So, um, in addition, in the community, I will add extra videos every week or so. We do monthly integrations where we take a piece of the course or something that's related to what we learned in the course, and we really focus on it because I had it. I, I have been in courses before where you go through and they have these really cool little videos where you're like, check it, I did it, check, I did it, check, I did it. But did you actually live any of it or implement mm -hmm. any of it? <laughs> No, probably not. So you're not getting as much out of it. So um, when you join the course, you're free and welcome to join our integrations. They're completely optional, but we'll just do something where we can really zero in on one piece. And sometimes they're deep. Sometimes it's like an a, emotional piece or sometimes it's like, okay, everybody, we're going to make sure we eat three meals every day this whole month. <laughs> like, that's, that's the integration. Um, and it's just an amazing community. It's, it's full of women who are eager to learn, who are sharing their experiences. Women are seeing changes to their marriage. They're seeing changes to their, um, their careers. They're developing a sense of self and confidence within themselves to be able to make all these little changes and just kind of come back to themselves. It kind of almost happens. Um, almost, it's not a surprise because that's why you joined, but it, it doesn't feel like it's the big um, had to turn your whole life upside down kind of changes. Awesome. Great. Sounds good. So we'll include those links below. And then the last question I always like to ask every guest is if you could go back in time to before you had that first recurrence of your fatigue and your, you know, collapse, if you will, want to call it that, which is probably an appropriate word. What <laughs> kind of words of wisdom would you give yourself at that time based on what you know now? I would tell myself that my body wasn't fighting against me. My body was trying to lead me, that there wasn't anything wrong. I just needed to listen a little bit more to my body and trust it. That's great. I love that. Okay. Anything else you want to share with us that I missed? Um, no, I think that's about it. I really am honored and delighted to have been on here. Awesome. Sounds great. So thanks everybody for listening to this episode of Autoimmune Rehab. Of course, as always, if you have enjoyed this episode, please share it with anybody else that you feel like could benefit. And if you have an autoimmune recovery story that you would like to share, I, please reach out. I would love to have the privilege of talking to you and interviewing you on an episode. And until then, we'll catch you soon on another episode of Autoimmune Rehab. <laughs>